what's up guys we are closing out week four of the witch queen so i've had time to play all the different content unlock most of the new weapons and play around with all the new subclasses so i think it's time to put out the top five pve loadouts in the witch queen and this will focus on the weapons i put out my favorite builds on all three characters yesterday so definitely check that out if you want to see that but this will be just the weapons and this will cover for just journal play all the way down to champion builds for solo lost sectors or even like GM Nightfalls. Also, this list will be in order, but at the same time, a lot of the builds are used for different things. So it's kind of hard to rank which one is actually better than the next. So starting out in fifth place, I have my Osteo loadout. The Osteo itself is extremely strong, one of the strongest exotics in the game. It absolutely shreds in everything, even when you're under light. And I usually pair that with the Forbearance Raid GL with Chain Reaction, then the Palmero with Auto Loading. And instead of a Rocket Launcher, you can always use a Linear Fusion Rifle if that is what you're more comfortable with. And I use this build all the time on Warlock with Necrotic Grip. You don't necessarily need Necrotic Grip for Osteo to be great, but with it, it is absolutely dirty. It's one of the best weapons in the game. I use this all during contests for the raid, and I doubled second place kill count on my team, which I was an accurate role, so don't get me wrong. I definitely was in position to give off kills, but while even 20 light, I was still just shredding through absolutely everything. And you can also change out your special weapon for the raid. I was using a blinding GL. Then once we got to boss fight, I put on a sniper to pair with the auto loading rocket to further increase my damage output. So overall, this is an extremely strong build for a little bit of everything. And you could adapt it to Nightfalls if you wanted to by changing out your energy slot for a champion weapon. Moving on to number four will be my dead messenger loadout so i usually use a submission the raid smg you can really use whatever primary you want in your kinetic slot and we have the dead messenger which will be good for Acclear first of all and for match game content because you can use all three elements and once again i have a auto loading rocket or a linear fusion of choice and now with this the dead messenger is one of the best Acclear weapons in the game and if you use it on the void version you can still take advantage of all your void 3.0 builds and the volatile rounds which just makes it extremely strong and really fun to use. This weapon is so good at Acclear, it was actually used for the solo first encounter of the raid, which has like insane tight windows to pull everything off and you need extremely efficient Acclear and the dead messenger was used for that. So this thing is definitely the real deal. Not only is it extremely fun, it's extremely effective and transitions into in-game perfectly with match game where you can use all three elements. So it's kind of the best of everything. Good for in-game, good for journal play, Honestly, you cannot go wrong with this weapon. Moving on to number three will be one of my Parasite builds. So I love Parasite. It is extremely good for single target damage, group back there, a little bit of everything, right? And with that, I usually pair a GL plus some machine gun. So either a Void SMG, I usually use the Every Wicked Moment. They could obviously use the Funnel Web and I pair that with a Blinding GL, the Mission Code. They could also run a SMG or primary choice in your top slot, then a Wayframe GL in your second. So really you can match whatever two weapons you want. And overall you get times 20 stacks with the Worm Launcher and it'll just destroy everything in the room. Doesn't matter if they're champions, bosses, mini bosses. I mean, just everything dies to the scene. It, it's burst damage is crazy. It's blast radius is, is absolutely insane. The only place you should not be using the Parasite is for longer boss fights and raids, but for like strike bosses, battleground bosses, I mean, just one shot will pretty much take them to their next phase. Also, you'll be deleting champions with this lane. So yeah, it's kind of good for a little bit of everything. And I'll probably try it out with GM my follows later this season. And with the top two slots not really being too important of exactly what you use, you can easily change this out for champion mods and make it work in the in-game content. Moving on to the number two slot is gonna be a few different versions of my solo Lost Sector builds. And I'm gonna cover all three different variations of the two champions that you'll face. And for all of my heavy of choice, if I have a exotic slot open, I usually use the G-Horn or the Parasite, depending on how like often there are champions. If I can get a few kills in between, I'll run Parasite, if not G-Horn. But if I don't have an exotic slot, I run the auto-loading Palmera. So the first variation will be for Unstoppable and Overload. For Unstoppable, I run the Hand Cannon, usually the Fightbringer. But really doesn't matter which one, you can also use the Judgment with Osmosis. Then for the Overload, I have my Void Grenades. I'm running the Dead Messenger to break all the different shields with Match Game. And the Palmera Auto-Loading Rocket for Champions and the Boss Fight. 
if it's barrier and overload i run the barrier bow and overload grenades with the under your skin with adaptive munitions which will be able to break all three of the elemental shields on match game and it's still a void weapon so i can still take advantage of my void 3.0 build with that i usually run the palmera and Islagi's burden for the champions and the boss and finally if it's both unstoppable and barrier I just bite the bullet and run double primary, run Fatebringer or any hand cannon of choice with the under skin that we just showed off with the adaptive munitions to still break all three of the elemental shields. Then I run whatever heavy of choice, G-Horn, Parasite, or the auto-loading rocket. And, and obviously I have to run both of the gauntlet mods. And those are the three different variations I use for solo lost sectors. And obviously these are geared towards you have to do both champions and all three shields. So these would obviously work in three main activities with champions two, where you can kind of divvy up who's doing what. These are built for one person doing it all. So obviously you can scale these back and only run one champion mod instead if you're in a fire team and kind of divvy up who's doing what. But overall how they all work is you more or less just have your heavy weapon for the champions and boss fight. And generally one rocket will either kill the champion or get them close enough where you can finish them so what i usually do as you've seen in a few of these clips is just simply stick the champion with my last impression rocket then maybe shoot a few of my whatever special weapon i have on the dead messenger or like one is an shot and the champion will die if you're playing void 3.0 you can also use your grenade for a slight debuff and overall these builds make them pretty easy then at number one slot, I think this is the most versatile best build in the game. It's going to be the Palmera Autoloading Rocket. With whatever void weapon of choice, I use it every waking moment. You can use Funnel Web or whatever. Then in our connect slot, we have Iznagi's Burden for boss fights, then Wither Horde for just general play. And the thing about these two weapons is they're both specials, so you can run Wither Horde for like a clear. Then if you get up to the boss fight, you can go over and swap over to Iznagi's Burden and you will not lose any ammo. Then you have the full DPS combo of the autoloading rocket with the Iznagi's Burden where you can shoot them back and forth, which results in not only one of the highest DPS numbers in the game, but also one of the best sustained damage output combos in the game. And you have your Void Weapon for the Void 3.0 builds with the Volatile Rounds with a horde to even further combo that for Aclear. And this works on all three characters with the Void 3.0 builds. And it's definitely the one I run on Hunter with all the invisibility, dodging to reload my weapons, and both my grenade and my snare bomb for the debuff. So overall, I think that is the best build in the game right now for the Witch Queen. Let me know what you have been running so far. What is your favorite weapon loadout in PvE? And as you saw for a lot of the builds, the energy weapons are void, and that is because everyone's playing Void 3.0 right now. But obviously, if you're not playing Void or you don't care about Volatile Rounds, you can easily throw in things like the Raid Pulse or even the Agma, both of which are extremely strong. And there's all kinds of other options that would work really well too. But those are my top 5 PvE loadouts for this DLC. The rest of the gameplay will be some Battlegrounds, decided to switch it up today. Anyways, like usual, thanks for watching, catch us next time.